cooperative governance and traditional affairs, vote nine. Program by program. Program one, administration, 170 million, 784,000 rands. House? Yes. Thank you, honorable members. Order, honorable <laughs> Mohono. Order. Program two, local governance. <clears throat> local governance, 197 million, 580,000 rands. Members? Yes. yes. Thank you, honorable members. Program three, development and planning, 138,427,000 rands. Yes. Thank you very much, honorable members. Program four, traditional institutional management, 152,495,000 rands. Yes. Thank you, honorable members. The budget for cooperative governance and traditional affairs, 23-24, vote 9, totaling 659,286,000 rands is now adopted by this house. And goes. <coughs> we'll now, thank you, honorable members. We'll Order. now. Mm -hmm. Order, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Nen. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I rise on Rule 92, the recording of opposition. You did not give us the chance to do that. As the FF Plus, according to this rule, we want to be formally recorded in the minutes that we are against this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. We have been doing that across all the votes. If any party does not agree, just raise your hand and you notice. If you don't raise your hand, I won't know that there's any party that is not doing that. Honorable Bukhatsu. It must be noted that the EFF rejects the budget vote. Thank you, Honorable Bukhatsu. Honorable Sonakile. Speaker, we reject the budget as the TA. Thank you, Honorable Sonakile. We'll now move to the budget for human settlement, vote 14, program by program. Order, Honorable Tsuaide. Order, program one, administration, 175,965,000 rands. Program two, housing needs, planning and research. 30,942,000 rands. Thank you. Program three, housing development, 1,792,336,000 rands. Thank you, honorable members. The budget for the Department of Women Settlements, 23-24, vote 14, 1 billion, Arawe, your responsibility is not to talk to me. I'm talking to these members who are disrupting me, please. Totaling 1,999,243,000 rands is now adopted. Honorable Nell. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Please let it be quoted. The FF Plus rejects this budget. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Bukhatsu. Thank you, Speaker. The EFF rejects the budget. Honorable Theologo. Thank you, Speaker. Please note that the Democratic Alliance does not approve this budget. Thank you very much, Honorable Members. Budget 9 and Budget 14 have been adopted by the House. Thank you very much, Honorable Maloyi. Honorable members, order honorable members and the MEC for Public Works and Roads to present the departmental budget speech, vote 11. Honorable Molapisi, you have uh, 40 minutes.
order buoko security may you please bring that member back so that he must use the proper route that door is only meant for members of the legislature proceed thank you very much uh, honorable speaker uh, of the provincial legislature member setsana danji the deputy speaker of the provincial legislature in absentia Melena Micha, Honorable Premier Kaubitsa Pushimape, Honorable Members of the Executive Council, my colleagues, the Chief Whip of the Majority Party, Relazi Mokosi, Honorable Members of the Provincial Legislature, House of Traditional Leaders led by Kosi Maute, leaders of different political parties, executive mayors and mayors of municipalities, members of the mayoral committees responsible for infrastructure and roads in municipalities across the province, the head of the department, uh, Muruti Ikopolem Moskansi, senior officials of the department, leadership of our district road forum and our stakeholders, members of the media, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the people of the Northwest uh, Dumela. Honorable Speaker, it is a singular honor for me to be in this August House to present this ultimate budget speech of the Department of Public Works and Roads, shaping the apex of the sixth administration and marks the year prior to the 2024 general elections. Honorable Speaker, in his State of the Nation address, President Cyril Ramaphosa declared 2023 as a year of action. He continuously say, and I quote, we are therefore focused on those actions that will make a meaningful difference now, that will enable real progress with, within the next year, and that will lay a foundation for a sustained recovery into the future, close quote. While our country has made tremendous progress since the first democratic election of 1994, we need to acknowledge that there are still many challenges related to poverty, inequality, and unemployment, and that we could have done more. The department presents this budget speech whilst the country and the province are working towards the economic recovery path that was worsened by a major two disaster being the COVID-19 pandemic, COVID pandemic and the flood experience in the past two financial years. We are presenting this budget speech having been placed under administration for four years. Notwithstanding, we managed to stabilize certain areas that were of concern, even though more could have been achieved through the intervention. Conversely, as we note these challenges that confront the department and admit that they may be considering daunting, we must resilient we must be resilient, committed, and focus on maintaining the momentum so that we can set our province on a transformative trajectory in the interest of building a better future for our communities and those who will follow us. This we will achieve only through action that will make impactful and immediate difference, not in the future, but now. In his state of the province address, Premier Mappe said, and I quote, we are on our feet, restless and listening attentively to the cries of our people who are delivering messages of impatience, requesting us to do the simple thing required of us, close quote. I must indicate and report that we have been engaging our communities in the past few months, and they have echoed the same sentiments to us. Moskosi dikensa sekhomotse mompati re kopane le kgosi mankurwane ka tsela D210 ya modimong 
ra bo ra kopana le khosi motlhabane le dikhosana ba papiletsela ya D209 molele mago ya matseng ra kopana le baagi ba Amalia le Maira re le utlwile ba gaetso and we are committed to doing exactly what we should do uh, as an infrastructure implementer to fulfill this without a fail we dare not fail our people in fulfilling this commitment infrastructure we must agree uh, it remains a backlog uh, and a serious challenge after that adverse impact that disaster bore on our dilapidating infrastructure looking at the rising level of unemployment the escalating cost of goods and services and the high fuel price we dare not wink at the opportunities presented to us uh, by the time and limited financial resources. We dare not linger in rendering the much needed infrastructure services as this would be a disservice to the people of our province. Our efforts should contribute to improving the lives and livelihoods of our people. This is and should be our only preoccupation we are determined and committed to fulfill this mandate. Uh, chair of Chess for this financial year of 2023-24, the department is allocated an overall budget of 3,824,517,000 rand. Program 1 administration is allocated 256,684,000 rand. Program 2, which is public works and infrastructure, 1,087,484,000 rand. Program 3, which is transport infrastructure, we have allocated 2,252,000 2, 252, rand. Program 4, which is community-based program, it's allocated 227,553,000 rand. Honorable members, allow me to go head in first to deal with burning issues of road infrastructure. We have always been open and upfront with the truth in admitting and confirming the challenges we as a department and road users alike are faced with on our provincial road network on a daily basis. We are on the verge of finalizing the establishment of a road agency for the province with the view to improve our future capital expenditure uh, projects. This agency among us will augment our own internal capacity and assist in fast tracking the services delivery of the planned major road infrastructure within the allocated time and allocated budget. Once established, it would propose that, uh, it is proposed that on an annual basis, the department will appropriate through the legislature funds for the management of the agency, even though the entity will be managed by a board of directors, its activities will be monitored by the department. Furthermore, we have resolved to appoint a project program and portfolio management unit that will act as the backbone of successful strategic planning approach in respect of all core business in the department. Chair of Chairs, we are therefore persuaded to present this not only as a budget speech, but as a catalogue of cold facts, translated in Swedish as Kalafakta. We wish to present the following objective factors as they pertain to the Department of Public Works and Roads. The allocation of the conditional grant, that is your PRMG, which is only meant for maintenance of an infrastructure outweigh the capital budget allocated for the upgrading of roads from gravel to tar by 63%. Our capital budget for roads is 405 million, whilst our PRMG allocated budget is 1,426,000,000 rand. The province has a huge backlog on the maintenance and upgrading of roads from gravel to surface. The backlog is also attributed to the reprioritization of commitments that were made prior to the 2010 Soccer World Cup, 
commitments to upgrade certain roads could not be achieved as the World Cup infrastructure had to be given priority. Indication as informed by our draft 10 year master plan suggests that we have in total 14,249 kilometer road network of gravel roads in the province. We need about 34 billion to can cover this space. The reality of the situation therefore suggests that with the, with the current allocation would only be able to achieve 500 kilometer in 10 years in the budget allocation from the equitable share if the budget uh, allocation from the equitable share remains the same. This therefore suggests, honorable members, that we need to be deliberate and decisive in prioritizing a budget allocation for road infrastructure that will match the demand for upgrading of roads from gravel to surface standard. Otherwise, we labor in vain before our communities. Given the current status quo, it goes without saying that the current backlog requires urgent attention. And if we are serious and if we think that road infrastructure is priority, we must match the weights. There are competing interests between rural access, rural access service delivery roads and the economic urban infrastructure that is much needed for the economic growth. In the previous two financial years, we have implemented 23 projects which were multi-year projects, capital road infrastructure projects with a total value of 2 billion 265 million rent. We are pleased to announce that at least 13 projects are completed and will be officially be handing over this project to our communities from the beginning of June as follows. Upgrading of gravel to surface standard of road P66 stroke one Komo Komo two P65 stroke one and road D614 stroke Z6114, uh, P65 stroke one to Lobotwani to Tholwe, an eight kilometer phase three in Moretele local municipality with a total budget of 60, 66 million and 21,000, which has great, created 17 work opportunity. Uh, it was completed in February and will be handing in, it over to our community members in June. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road Z374 from O Street to Good Hope Phase 1, a 15 kilometer road in Kahisano, Molopo local municipality, with a total budget of uh, 129,960,000, which created 68 work opportunities, uh, a Phase 1, was completed in February and it's ready for handover also in June. Rehabilitation of road D933 from Lechtenberg to Helixpan and a portion of road uh, D2095 to road P183 stroke one passing through that field and Sepaku mines phase one of 40 kilometer in Ditsobotla local municipality with a budget of 191 million has created 98 work opportunities uh, and phase one was completed in February and is ready to be handed over in June. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road Z482 from Madiboho through Madiboho Pan, a 13 kilometer uh, road in Ratlo local municipality with a total budget of uh, 73 million, which created 47 work opportunities it will be handed over in July. Rehabilitation and repair and reseal of road P152 stroke one from N18 at Setlahole to P34 stroke four in Delarayville, which is a phase two, a 28 kilometer in Tsuaying local municipality with a total budget of 150 million, which created 10 work opportunities will be handed over also in July. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road D417, that is Lobatleng to Motswedi, a 13 kilometer phase two in Ramotsere Muilwa local municipality with a total budget of 108, uh, created 45 work opportunities for our people 
it will be handed over in October. Rehabilitation of road P175-1 from Pochefstrom to Fandabale Park, the border between Gauteng and the Northwest, a 22.5 kilometer, which is a phase two in JB Max local municipality, with a total budget of 126 million, which created 45 work opportunities. It will be handed over uh, in uh, October. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road Z422 from intersection of Albert Lutuli Road through Lokaleng and Mohosani Village to Klapeng, a 30 kilometer road in Mahiken local municipality with a total budget of 141 million, which created 70 work opportunities for our people. It will be handed over in October 2023. Special maintenance uh, of road P47 stroke three from Swartrachens to road P34 stroke two, including intersection improvement of approximately 30 kilometers, which had ensure safety improvement in the Ketlin River municipality with a total budget of 38 million, has created uh, six work opportunities. It will be handed over also in October. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road D520 from Makoloko to Betani, a 10 kilometer phase one in Rustenburg local municipality with a total budget of uh, 86 million has created 90, 90 work opportunities for our people and it will be handed over in November. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road D201 from Pampirstad to Matlapaneng to N18, a 24 kilometer road, road uh, phase one in Greater Taung local municipality with a total budget of 148 million has created 130 work opportunities for our people will also be handed over in November. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road D27 from Khanyesa to Frachas to Madinonyani, a 19 kilometer with a total budget of 108, 100, 180 million has created 130 work opportunities. It is implemented in Kakisano local municipality and it will be handed over in December. Upgrading of a Dwarsberg Derdeport Road P124 stroke 1 Dwarsberg to Limpopo border road D53 road P124 stroke 1 to Mulatedi to Madikwe road 124 stroke 1 uh, in the river of Botswana border including the 50% of the bridge widening approximately a three kilometer in the Moses Cotton local municipality with a total budget of 27,703 million created uh, work opportunities of uh, five people. It will be handed over in December. For the current financial year, the department will implement 13 new upgrading roads project, which translate into the investment value of more than 664 million Included in the list of upgrading from gravel to uh, surface are the following roads. A 21 kilometer upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road D514, Z561, D543, and 501 from Ramokoka to Morokom via Pelkop in Moses Kotani municipality. We have already introduced the contractor to the community and the traditional leadership and to Kosi Ramokoka on February the 13th of this year. We indicated when we were reporting and addressing the community members that this project would create 150 work opportunities for our people and further 45 million will translate into business opportunities for local contractors with a total project value of uh, 209 uh, million. The 11 kilometer upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road D479 from Kunotswana village towards N4 at Tuefontein, which is a phase three in Ramotseri Muila local municipality. We also introduced the contractor to the community and the stakeholders, and the contractor is already on site. The total project is 134 million, and the project is envisaged to create 47 work opportunities for our people. The 10-kilometer upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road D209, 
D997, D220, and D716 uh, from Molelema to Mateng in Greater Daung local municipality. I must indicate and report to you, uh, Chair of Chair, that this project was stalled for over two years due to contractual complexity. We managed to unblock the project and engage traditional leadership and communities. And I am pleased to announce that on the 9th of May, we reintroduced the contractor to the community, the municipality, and the traditional council. The total project uh, is just over uh, 100 million, and it will create 30 uh, work opportunities for our people, including the subcontracting of the 30%. A nine kilometer upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road. Z431 from end of Tar to Kora entrance on Arabal Mohono, an upgrading of Kora Training Center internal road in Maikeng, local municipality. The contractor is appointed, and the contractor yesterday received the permit to resume with work. The project value is 63 million. We'll spend a further 1 billion, uh, 272 on five projects over the MTF period on special maintenance and rehabilitation, which will include the following. Rehabilitation of road P31 stroke one, that is the Houten border Pelindaba to 123 stroke one in RTBS uh, Dam. The value of the project is 630 million in Madiben local municipality. We have already introduced the contractor to the community and the stakeholder uh, in that area. And the project is aimed at creating 17 work opportunities, although I think that this 17 number is very low given the uh, project value. The rehabilitation of road D933 from Lachtenberg to Helexpan and a portion of road 209 passing through uh, the Sepaku mine. This is a phase two project of 25.7 25 kilometer. The value of the project is 446 million in the Tsobotla local municipality we are introducing the contractor on the 22nd of June. Rehabilitation of road P117 from Ottosdal to P13 to Hartebies Fontaine, a 16 kilometer road and special maintenance of road 117 stroke one from Ottosdal to De La Reville. The value of the project is uh, 149 million, which, is, which covers both Matlosane local municipality and Zwaying local municipality. The project will create 50 work opportunities for our people and the contractor is already on site and we are monitoring progress. Special maintenance on the section of Nelson Mandela Road between Denville and Dada Motors in my beginning, which is a four kilometer road, which the value is 47 million uh, in the Mahiken local municipality. We have introduced the contractor, the contractor is on site. This project is, was supposed to uh, complete in September premier, but due to uh, some challenges of uh, storm water challenges and all that, uh, the contractors requested an extension and to complete the project in December. To this date, I must report that the department has appointed 37 contractors in all four districts of the province. Uh, that is 24 projects. Are for major rehabilitation and special maintenance, and 13 are upgrading from gravel to tar projects. A total of 1,063 job opportunities have been created, and our SMME people who have benefited are 172 uh, who have subcontracted in all these projects. And as and when we go and open this project, the MEC would demand to see these people who are said to have benefited so that uh, we can confirm and validate the information that has been presented before us. In this financial year, the department will be appointing 10 consultants for the planning and design of upgrading from gravel surface standard of road by the end of the second quarter for the following roads. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road D2215 and D228 from D408 in Botsalano through villages Madutle, Matase, and Dinokana in Ramotsere Muila local municipality. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road D506, 
Z559 and D332 from Dwarsberg to Park Stry in Moses Kotane local municipality. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road P23 stroke uh, 3 R504 from Amalia to Myra in the Mamusa local municipality. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road Z45 from Lotlakani D41 to Mancha D433 in Mahiken local municipality. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road P51 stroke 2 and D56 between Sesobe and Brakel in Moses Kotane local municipality. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road P51 uh, stroke 2 from Makweling to road D56 through the village of Kwamasokolani and Siha in the lo Moses Kotane local municipality. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road D5111 from Likutung, uh, P501 stroke 1 through the village of Mahon to Kamel Puom, D531 in Moses Kotane local municipality. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road DZ546 uh, from uh, P48 stroke 1 in Borakalalo through Nyetze to Berfontein P52, P, P22 4 stroke 1 in Madibe local municipality. Upgrading from gravel to surface standard of road D210 from Taun to Mutimung in Greater Taun local municipality. Planning, design, and construction of park spot, especially for Pilanesbeck Game Reserve in the uh, Moses Kotani local municipality. We are ensuring coordination of our efforts for the delivery of quality road infrastructure. We have been having engagement with the South African Road Agency, that is Sandra. We emphasized the need for consistency in the implementation of the projects in the province. As you drive uh, and enter into the borders of the province from Gauteng, you could feel the road in terms of the quality is different, and we are addressing that. We said that the people of the Northwest must be kept abreast with regard to information regarding projects implemented in the province by Sandra. This is in relation to be taken on board regarding economic spin-offs as it relates to business and work opportunities because we cannot accept that we see people from other provinces benefiting even from the small projects of grass cutting on the roads or maintenance of, of, of the roads whilst we could have given this opportunity to our local people in different municipalities. We have also resolved to have quarterly meetings to monitor progress on projects being implemented by Sandra. To this end, for 2023-24 financial year, Sandra will implement 33 projects to the value of 1.6 billion. This will cover approximately 2,598 kilometer road network across all the four districts in Bojanala. The projects will be implemented in the following uh, municipalities, that is your Ketlem, Madibe, Moritele, Moses Kotan, and Rustenberg, and in Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, it will be implemented in Matlosana, including the N12 uh, sinkhole, which has taken years to be uh, repaired. We'll be jointly introducing the contractor to communities with Sandral by July, and the other areas to be covered will be JB Max and uh, Makwasil. In Nagamudir Mulema, it will be in Ditsobotla, Maiken, Ramotsere, and Ratlo and Swaying. In Sukhumutsu Mumpati, it will be in Greater Taung, Karisa Nomolopo, Mamusa, Lekwate, Manning, and Naledi. Chair of Chairs, we have consciously taken a decision to redefine, repurpose, uh, and refocus the role of our district and its sub-district in the offices because we cannot accept that every time we underspend the provincial road maintenance grant. We agree that we can't be retaining any money or we can't be rolling over any money to national. In that, we have decentralized the road maintenance grant to the district as they are in the call phase of service delivery. We have agreed that 40% of the conditional grant that is the PRMG uh, will, will be allocated and be set aside for routine, road routine maintenance, including 
pothole patching receive and regraveling so that you don't have any road in the district with the potholes. The district will increase their budget and they will take care of that as we declare war against the portal. The approach will lead to improved expenditure and efficiency. Reporting lines with regard to core functions have also been streamlined to ensure proper coordination and implementation of plans. The biggest plus is the revised financial delegation, which are expected to empower directors of each district to sign of bigger amounts for projects and tenders in their respective areas of work. The rationalize, the rational is this approach will improve on the turnaround time, especially with regard to road projects and other services delivery challenges often experienced by some municipalities and rural villages under our traditional leadership. On the other hand, honorable members, there cannot be any other best formula, at least for now, to make the district development, district development model work and yield the desired outcome for the province. Other than the approach and initiative outlined above to revitalize our district service and centers across the province. To this end, the district will implement 52 projects with Ngaka Mudirimolema leading the pact with 16 projects. Other areas would be nine projects in uh, Dr. KK, 13 projects in Sehumutsi Mumpati, 14 projects in Pochanala district. In accelerating service delivery and ensuring that our provincial and municipal roads are trafficable, we will continue to collaborate our efforts as we partner with municipalities to reduce portal in their internal roads. We have identified five municipalities, namely Mahikeng, Naledi, Matlosana, Madibeng, and its local municipalities. Uh, for the support, which include rendering support on portal patching, clearing of, spot, clearing of spotting fields, and cleaning of illegal dumping site. We have already started and launched a program in Mahikeng, which the Premier, uh, the Mayor of Mahikeng, and myself are monitoring. The program was launched on the 2nd of May, and the municipalities, other municipalities, are soon to follow. In alleviating the negative, if the negative effects of floods on our roads infrastructure, the department sought intervention from the national department. And in response, the national department of transport allocated 130 million for the construction of 14, uh, 14 emergency Welisizwe bridge in Ngakamudir Mulema. At national level, a total of 96 emergency bridges will be implemented. And in this financial year, as the province, we have submitted 46 uh, Welisizwe bridges for consideration. And I must report with an excitement that 14 bridges have been approved for this current financial year, while 13 remaining bridges will be implemented in the next two financial year of your medium term expenditure framework as approved and will be implemented in the outer years in quarter one, that is in this, in the quarter that is nearing towards the end. Three bridges will be implemented as follows. Muntiwa Start Bridge will be implemented. Kraipan Bridge Gap 2 will be implemented. And Kraipan Bridge Gap 2 will be implemented. In the next quarter, three bridges will be implemented as follows. The Setratwe Bridge, the Maretzane and Madibe Bridge will be implemented. In quarter three, four bridges will be implemented, including the following. The Motlodibo Bridge, the Takom Bridge Gap 1, the Takom Bridge Gap 2. In quarter four, three bridges will be implemented. That is Buikuzo Gap 1 and Buikuzo Gap 2. This will be rolled out in partnership with the, with the National Department of Public Works uh, Infrastructure uh, and the South African National Defense Force. A further 111 million rand uh, was set aside to deal with flood damage roads across the province. Bojanala was the worst affected 
uh, of all the district in terms of the actual damage. To this end, the allocation has been committed for 19 roads project as follows. In Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, two roads will be attended to with a budget just over 10 million. Ngakamudir Mulema, seven roads will be attended to with a budget just over 16 million. Sikhumuti Mumpati, five roads will be attended to with a budget of 28 million. Uh, Bojanale district, uh, five roads will be attended to with a budget of 48 million. Honorable members, we are all in agreement that in order for us as a department and provincial government to move with five, speed five in unionism. Remaining. We are all in agreement that in order for us as department and provincial government to move with speed in, uni in un unison and a fully functional brigade, we need to build a public service that is professional and ethical and driven by merits. That cannot be overemphasized and it is at this point where we pledge an, uh, an, uh, our unwavering support of what the national framework towards the professionalization of public sector seek to achieve. That is to build a capable, uh, a capable state. That said, uh, Chair of Chess, I'm pleased to confirm we have already made significant progress in this critical area. We now have a full complement of senior management services uh, in our quest to capacitate reasonably the top structure of the department, which is 25, nine, are women, which translate into 36. The department also has a substantive head of the department after hobbling without one for more than four years when the department was placed under section 101P of the intervention in terms of the constitution of South Africa by cabinet. Therefore, public works and roads have not had a substantive accounting officer for the prolonged period. We have appointed the, CF, the CFO filled in strategic position of chief director, building infrastructure, chief director, uh, road infrastructure, chief director, facility management, and a director for Bojanala district. This translates into six appointments of senior management members since August because uh, the intervention was lifted in August and we move swiftly to fill in critical vacant posts. Honorable members, the process of filling vacant funded and critical position, especially for the core function continuously, vigorously in the middle management and other levels of our operation in the four districts, including head office. All vacant funded position will be filled by quarter four. This we do mindful also of the current moment challenges to government posed by the ever increasing public service wage bill. It is this factor and others which often put the brakes on our efforts to finalize and have approved department final uh, organizational structure. Nevertheless, our corporate look and feel as the department strive among others. To spell out clearly requirements for recruitment and selection process mandatory in, in induction for new public servants and performance. Our ultimate goal is to only have, and we are committed that those who, the, the, the people who are unfit or unwilling to serve public service should make way for those who are dedicated uh, and capable. We are also in talks with the Faculty of Engineering at the University of the Northwest to assist us in developing a comprehensive strategy that will enable us as the department to attract and retain much needed and sought after technical skills. This would also address the challenges of critical skills shortage uh, in the department. We can all agree that the effects of inconsistent power supply continue to impact negatively on our operations. Load shedding demands of us to, to, of us to innovate and find alternative energy source to ensure service delivery continue unhindered. The department is compelled to procure diesel fuel to propel se several, be uh, several backup generator we have installed in key strategic areas in government precinct. An unprecedented demand for diesel supply by all sectors of economy delivery, uh, therefore, as well as the quantity reality or yet readily available often pose a challenge. Honorable members, the theft of cable connecting building to power generators has become a trend in our premises. 
The department has resolved to move speedily in exploring and implementing alternative source of energy and renewable, and we have set aside 65 million to address this. Priority issue will be given to strategic government-owned buildings, including Harona Old Parliament Prestige uh, Units, uh, the lower district base offices for uninterrupted service delivery during uh, out power outrages. Additionally, lease properties for office accommodation, a separate arrangement uh, will be explored. That may include amending future contracts to include provision of alternative energy as one of the requirements on such building. On behalf of clients departments, in the previous financial year, uh, we have completed a number of projects, including a project six project for education department, social development, arts and culture, and we have spent 125 million. We also completed two sanitation projects for the Department of Health. We are currently constructing seven new school projects, which will be completed in this current financial year. We have put aside 500 and, uh, with the total value of 518 million. Additionally, 164 million has been set aside for the renovation of repair for storm damaged schools, which 15 are in Akamudirim Lema, uh, 13 in Bojanala. Uh, five in RSM and six in KK. The department plan to construct and complete one new library in Dinokana. Uh, Chair of Chair, the renovation and facelift of Karuna building is long overdue. Therefore, the department has found it prudent to set aside an amount of 400 million to revamp and extend the symbol of the provincial head office of the provincial uh, administration of, of government. We had intended to dispose 476 non-core assets, that is the houses that are occupied by government officials. To date, we have already signed 113 sale agreements, of which 100 have been signed and returned, and 16 power of attorneys are at an advanced stage. Uh, and we have also uh, disposed of 18 land parcels uh, through donation for restitution purposes. The department is anticipating the disposal of 160 properties. Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, in trying to move with speed, the department, the provincial government continue to, uh, in its endeavor to acquire the multi-tenancy office complex consisting of estimated 20,000 square meters in the area of Mahike Mabato. The negotiations have commenced and finalization and conclusion of talks will be based on the consensus reached. We are committed to our mandate to ensure that we provide office accommodation to all provincial government departments. Uh, Honorable Chair of Chairs, we have pitched the program on community-based uh, which is EPWP at the high level of a chief director uh, because this is important for job creation machinery in the department. Plans are at an advanced stage to fully capacitate this community-based program to, enab to enable us to have sizable footprint in our district and sub-district service center. This will ensure better and proper coordination of our EPWP activities with regard to fair and transparent recruitment process of new beneficiaries as well as accurate reporting on the number of job opportunities in PWP sectors uh, by other government departments. We need more hands on deck to develop a proper exit plan for the current brigade of the P EPWP. The department has managed to implement a public protector agreement on contractor development this involves 64 contractors, 26 of which have already exited the program. As part of an exit strategy for the remaining 36 contractor, co contractors, 67 routine road maintenance project to the tune of 304 million was allocated. Furthermore, building maintenance project will be allocated to same to help finalize this process. The department is looking at developing a framework for this graduate for these graduating contractors from the program. The new contractor development program comprising of 160 participants will be implemented in the third quarter. 
the department will also uh, in the process is also in the process of resuscitating the brick making project which was a very good concept but was not properly conceptualized. This will be finalized as soon as the department completes a conditional assessment on the existing plant and the long outstanding legal matter between us and ACIDA. The current EPWP group of participants is expected to exit the program at the end of July this year. The youth in this exiting group will be afforded the opportunity to partake in youth development programs offered as a result of the Department of Public Works and Roads and the National Youth Development Agency. A new intake of 15,000 participants will be recruited from the August 2023. This group will participate in projects such as Itirele, road, uh, routine road maintenance, boiler operating, and other long and short skills development program. This will ensure that once they exit, they would have been developed and capacity to put acquired skills from the program to meaningful use. The department will be hosting a two-day EPWP provincial summit at the end of June to be addressed by the Deputy Minister, Benny Swartz. The purpose of the summit is to, among others, usher in the new EPWP. The one and only reason the department got a qualified audit opinion, as I conclude, uh, Honorable Chair of Chess, audit opinion by the AG in the financial year of 2021-22 was based on one finding with irregular expenditure being only qualification. The good thing is we know fully well that the costs were, were then, so it will be a travesty indeed if those grey areas are not addressed. In conclusion, Honorable Speaker, as I address issues of discipline and consequence management, uh, for us to build an efficient, capable, and ethical state free of corruption uh, is one of the goals set out by government. Consequence management is the immediate available tool we have at our behavior, ranging from misconduct, unethical conduct, including dealing with suspect and reported honesty, just to mention a few. We also take serious the audit finding and the recommendation by the Auditor General, including also in areas where she has recommended further investigation and action. To this end, uh, Chair of Chess, we have in total 22 cases, which include, among others, contravention of the PFMA. We have finalized 10, three of which have resulted in dismissal. 12 are currently at various stages towards finalization. With regard to matters handed over to the SIU, we have received reports involving three senior managers. The matter are currently at different stages for finalization. We are on top of our game in dealing decisively with all reported acts of malfeasance across all levels of operation. Uh, against this background, honorable members, we believe that only efficient, ethical, and developmental oriented state can deliver adequately uh, on the commitment to improve the life of our people this country and to fulfill, to faithfully serve no other cause than that of the public service. Uh, Chair of Chess, as I conclude, I would like to thank my beloved organization, the African National Congress, for deploying me into this legislature to carry its mandate and deliver on its promises to our people. I'm forever grateful for entrust, I'm, I am forever grateful for entrusting me with this mammoth responsibility. I do not take it lightly, this opportunity to serve, and I will continue to serve diligently and to do my best of my ability. I would like to express my gratitude to the Premier, Premier Mape, who continue to offer his wisdom and support for our program. Our constant one-on-one -on -one meeting and departmental engagement with top management always provide us with guidance. I'm also sending my sincere gratitude to the Speaker of the Legislature, Honorable Vasetsana Danchi. I wish to extend my gratitude to all traditional leadership in our province under the leadership of Kosi uh, Mautui, who continuously, uh, jealously guard our infrastructure during community protests. Let me take this opportunity to thank the Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee, Honorable Choile, and members of the committee for their oversight role which ensure that we provide the services uh, for the people of the Northwest. I thank the committee staff for your humility and hard work. Let me take this opportunity 
to thank the head of the department, uh, Muruti Moses Ikhopolenkhansi, the senior management of the department and staff in my office, and all departmental staff. May you all continue with your dedication to ensuring quality services delivery, and I appreciate you gratefully. To my wife, Bongi, who is on the gallery, and the family, no words can explain my gratitude for the unconditional love and support always. Thank you for your understanding and willingness to sit back as I'm constantly away from home on the quest to serve the people of our province. I would most importantly take this opportunity to thank the all-knowing, ever true and present creator of the universe, God Almighty. As I quote the second Corinthians verse four, chapter eight, uh, I mean verse, uh, chapter four, verse eight to four. We, we are hard pressed on every side by troubles, perplexed but not driven to despair. We are hunted down but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down but we are not destroyed, close quote. We dare not allow challenges to deter us from actualizing our plans to serve our communities and our people with distinction in this year of action. Honorable members, I conclude this address in his seminal book titled The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born by Ayikwei Ama from Ghana, who confirms my mantra when he says, alone, I'm nothing, I have nothing. We have power, but we'll never know it, we'll never see it work unless we come together to make it work. Close quote. Let us grow Northwest Province together. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mulapisi. We'll now call the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Community Safety, Transport Management, Public Works and Roads, Honorable Tuaile. You have nine minutes. Honorable COC, Madam Speaker Medanchi, Madam Deputy Speaker Melena Micha, Tona Kholo Rebu Shimape, Pakudu Tamaha, Maloko Anto Kukwano Peomolao, Ma Kho Siyaro Nabemba Rona Bemba Mu, Ba Tutlehi Babaye Mba Rona, Gentle Ladies and Gentlemen, Madam Speaker, Department of Public Works and Roads is gazetted as department responsible for infrastructure implementation, including road construction. And importantly, it is a custodian of all state immovable assets. And is also mandated to coordinate, plan, and or provide leadership for implementation of expanded public works program. These three critical deliverables happen to be what define the duties of the department and are means through which the performance of the department should be measured uh, with. The question is whether or not the department is able to do this work. Of course, uh, COC, it is the view of the portfolio committee that the APP and the budget under review in this debate would help department to discharge its responsibilities and in so doing, add positive impetus to government's efforts to roll out infrastructure and construct roads in pursuit of human development, creation of conducive environment for thriving of economic growth, reduction of poverty, creation of employment, and to mitigate against unprecedented levels of inequalities. Uh, COC, the Portfolio Committee have had multiple engagement with the department and we have successfully processed the department's APP and considered its appropriated budget. We have pointed out to the department our concerns as portfolio committee and 
uh, demonstrated and articulated on how they could be redressed, where we can prevent losses, and of course, maximize, maximize benefits for the masses of our people. COC, the department has impressed upon the portfolio committee that it takes into cognizance the council of the portfolio committee. We are therefore of the impression that the department would act and do its work in good faith and help to respond to the plight of the masses of our people. Madam Speaker, in strongest possible terms, the portfolio committee bemooned and condemned failure on part of the department to use 